Yes, special episode. You know, where I'm gonna talk about documentaries. I always say documentary is just another genre within cinema. You know, not unlike horror or comedy or drama. But obviously, you do have the distinction between fiction in all those other genres and non-fiction in, in the documentary genre. And well, of course, it is a vital difference. Because, you know, all, all the movies that I cover in this, this video series, they never really get to me. Because, you know, in the end, they're, they're, it's just a movie, you know? But these... These are all real, it's a documentary. So, uh, let's see. The list is mostly based on uh, recommendations by you guys, which was also more or less in line with what I had in mind. Especially the first one. One of the most often recommended movies on today's list. It's coincidentally also the whole reason I wanted to do this, um, this whole documentary uh, video in the first place. It might not be as disturbing as it is just incredibly sad, but I had to cover this one. Dear Zachary, a letter to a son about his father. Well, let's do this. Well, obviously, these are never my, my real reactions after watching the movies. Because if it was real, you might have um, seen me tear up a little bit. I know you did. As the title would suggest, this documentary is made for Zachary. Zachary is a little baby that'll unfortunately never know his father, Andrew, because he died before little Zachary was even born. Andrew's BFF and filmmaker, Kurt, he decided to go on a road trip and interview all of Andrew's friends, family, colleagues, you know, loved ones, to make a special memoir, if you will, for little Zachary. While watching, however, this documentary will present you with plot twist after plot twist to the point where you're thinking that you're watching an M. Night Shyamalan movie. But I won't spoil anything, because really, this movie works best when you go into it without knowing anything. So yeah, it's definitely an interesting... I'm just kidding. <laughs> Although it's hard to talk about this movie without spoiling it, I'll try. Okay, so the reason this documentary works is because the subject matter is interesting. The, the main characters, if you will, Zachary's father, Andrew, and Andrew's parents, they seem to be incredible people in the best way possible. Besides that, the filmmaker, he got access to an incredible amount of footage. Not only what he shot for this movie or, or in the past with his friend, Andrew, but anything related to anything in his movie, it's there. The fallback with that amount of material, though, is that it sometimes seems like he tried to include too much, and, well, I guess that's my only complaint. Uh, sometimes it goes so fast you can barely keep up, especially when it's all legal talk, something I'm not 100% familiar with. Plus, I, I didn't really care too much for some of his editing style, also like audio-wise. But in the end, really, I, I can't blame the guy too much for the choices he made, since it has been such a personal project. I know I didn't sell this movie, like, at all, but believe me. I mean, just check out these, these IMDb user comments. <laughs> and really, they're, they're not exaggerating. As sad and, and cruel as it may sound, it's just the, the perfect story for an emotionally devastating documentary. Okay, next up. Uh-oh. It's Earthlings. Well, uh, let's do this. Um, okay guys. Let's talk. Let's talk Earthlings. Earthlings is basically a sequence of raw and uncensored clips showing five industries that rely on animals for profit. Pets, food, clothes, entertainment, and science. 90% of the footage I'd say is animal cruelty, and since I know that's a touchy subject, I'll try to only edit in the, the, the safe parts, if you will. That's how much I care. <laughs> so yeah, what's there to say about this one? I think most people already know that your meat in the supermarket and your leather jacket in the store, that they don't magically appear there. That would just be plain ignorant. But seeing how bad it can be, it can still definitely be an eye-opener. And I guess that's mostly what this documentary is. Just 90 minutes of shocking images showing how bad animals are treated within these industries. Is that disturbing? Well, yeah, I guess so. It's all real. This actually happens. Any sane person will be touched by the stuff you see in this movie. But does that make it a good documentary? I don't know. I don't think so. Because, in all honesty, I didn't think it was that great of a movie. If its sole purpose was just to shock people into becoming vegans, then maybe. But as a documentary, I don't think it's 
all that good. It didn't really go anywhere or, or made any points besides that what you would read as a mini plot description. To me, it eventually just became boring to watch. And I'm not saying that as an excuse because it was too much. You know, I mean, I've seen worse stuff, more worse footage on the internet. I'm just saying it, it just got boring because it really didn't go anywhere. In that sense, it's really more a reportage than it is a documentary. At least I hope in English there is also a distinction between those two formats as it is in my native language. In the end, I, I do recommend everybody to seek this one out and, you know, like face reality and then they can and should be able to decide for themselves what to do with it. I mean, I'm still gonna eat meat later today, probably. Th does that make me a hypocrite? I don't know. Mm. When it comes to documentaries, I've always learned to be skeptical. And although that the footage obviously does not lie, I do believe that this, this documentary is at least little skewed. But then again, that's, that's not what I want to go into with this video. I mean, that's that's not what my channel is about. It's it's normally about having fun. It's, so, yeah, we can discuss in the comments if you want. Movies like The Cove and, and, and Blackfish, they were also recommended quite a few times. But I'm not, but I'm not gonna cover those. Um, I think for now we have enough proof that humans are the worst scum on the earth. <laughs> Although that the next movie shows us exactly that again. I guess it's just like when you, when you talk about documentaries, disturbing documentaries, that, that's just what we're gonna get. The human race being assholes. Part of the infamous original Mondo Shockumentary series. Next up we have Adio Dio Tom. Goodbye Uncle Tom. What's his Italian title? Okay, well uh, let's see, let's watch this movie. Ha! <laughs> uh, oh wow. What's the, uh, I, I don't know about this one guys. Directed by Gialtiero Jacopetti and Franco Prosperi, the duo that together with Paolo Cavara, <laughs> all these Italian names, brought us the original infamous Mondo movie, starting with Mondo Kane in 1962. Dubbed the original shockumentary, Mondo Kane would go on to spawn a gazillion imitators, including the Faces of Dead and Traces of Dead series. Goodbye Uncle Tom was the last installment in their original series, and <laughs> man, this is an odd one. It's about two filmmakers that travel back in time to southern US in the, I guess, early to mid-1800s to document slavery. Obviously, there isn't a lot of footage of the actual event, so they reenacted everything. Shot in Haiti, with hundreds of locals as extras, you can't believe your eyes when you see certain scenes. It's degrading in the worst possible way, which sort of gives you respect for the actors, but at the same time you can't stop but wondering how the hell this movie was ever made. Upon its release it was mostly criticized for being extremely racist and nothing more than an exploitation shockumentary. <laughs> I can sort of see why, there's a lot of scenes that are just gratuitous violence or nudity that don't particularly make a point or, or move the story forward. But then again, if they wanted to show you just how bad slavery was, then good job, I guess. Although, I'm, I'm no expert on, on slavery whatsoever, so I have no idea how accurate this movie actually is. The thing I probably love most about this movie is the music. Composed by Rez Ortolani, perhaps best known to some as the composer for Cannibal Holocaust, this soundtrack quickly became one of my favorites after first hearing it. I even bought it, something I rarely do. It gives the movie such a surreal feel and it might not be fitting, like, at all, but in a way it does. With a different soundtrack, it would have been a completely different movie. So yeah, th this movie is definitely one of a kind. It's, it's a unique viewing experience and it, and it really makes you wonder just how the hell this movie can even exist. I thought it was actually pretty good, albeit perhaps a little too long. But, uh, it's, no, it's definitely not for everyone. The directors, they made this movie to show that they were not racist. Because our previous movie, Africa Adio, it was being criticized a lot for being racist. Although the directors do admit that they failed miserably in, in doing so, trying to point out that, that they were not racist. Also, before I'm getting attacked, I saw and, and reviewed the, the international theatrical cut of Goodbye Uncle Tom. It differs quite a bit from the, the Italian director's cut. The reason that I chose the theatrical cut is because, well, upon its release, that, that was the one that everyone saw. That's the one that, that caused all the controversy. 
so before we go to the last, the most requested slash recommended movie on today's list, Let's make a quick little stop in San Francisco, home of the beautiful Golden Gate Bridge. Heck, even I've seen it, you know, like pulling some mad kickflips in front of it. I don't care. Well, what were we talking about? Oh yes, the bridge. Let's check it out. Okay, that was pretty interesting. But it wasn't really about the Golden Gate Bridge. It's about people committing suicide at the Golden Gate Bridge. Hmm. Apparently more people commit suicide here than any other place in the world. To immediately sort of like spoil the, the premise of this movie, um, this movie isn't really about suicide at the Golden Gate Bridge. In my opinion, it's more about suicide at the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, in other words, it's way more about suicide in general. And is suicide disturbing? Uh, I don't think so. I do think it is a very, very interesting subject, and, and I say that with all due respect. So we get to see interviews with families and friends that have lost a dear person in their life because they committed suicide at the Golden Gate Bridge. But we also see witnesses and even a survivor. What's interesting about this movie is that it's, it's real. Well, obviously it's real, but I mean as in... It doesn't show all the victims like as angels and, and the grieving people as how do you expect them to grieve in a Hollywood movie. These are real people. Real people react differently. Some had answers, some didn't. Some had questions, some didn't. Some accepted it, others didn't. It's, it's very humane to see. The big twist, however, in this movie is that they actually show the jumping of most of the people they're talking about in this movie. And really, that brings this documentary to a whole other level and also raises a lot of questions. Apparently, the filmmakers spend week after week filming the bridge and after they witnessed the suicide, when the body was identified, they tracked down friends and relatives for an interview for the documentary without telling them that they had and will eventually include the actual footage of that person committing suicide. And that's pretty crazy. In an interview, the director does say that all the people featured in this documentary saw the, the final cut and gave their consent, but it's still pretty eerie. Maybe that's more disturbing than, than the topic itself. And well, actually seeing people ending their lives, it's, it's quite chilling. The problem, I, I don't know if it's a problem, but it's a shame that, that um, it would have been way more interesting if it looked more into the Golden Gate Bridge aspect of the whole story. Now it, it's really just there as a backdrop. It would have been the exact same documentary if the people committed suicide elsewhere. And, and that, that's really a shame. It's, it's really a missed opportunity. Like Dear Zachary, perhaps it's more sad than it is disturbing, but, but it's definitely worth checking out. I mean, uh, suicide, it's a, it's a very complicated thing. I don't, I don't mean to sound demeaning, but really, yeah, watching this movie, it really gets you thinking about it. See, I'm, I'm doing it right now. But before we do that, let's just wrap up this video with the last movie on today's list. When I first heard about this one after its release in 2012, I was like, whoa, that's a, that's a, a great, like a, a daring topic for a documentary. But <laughs> I didn't watch it until it like blew up, receiving a BAFTA award and then being nominated for Academy Award, both in the, in the category of best documentary. And well, yeah, <laughs> I watched it after all of that. So I sort of felt like jumping on the bandwagon. You know how that goes. D do you guys know what I'm talking about? That's right. It's the um, act of killing. Ooh, sounds intense. Let's watch this one. Wow, again, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, it's definitely interesting. The premise is perfect for a controversial documentary. In the mid 60s, at least half a million alleged communists were killed in Indonesia after their first president was overthrown. Some 40, 50 years later, we follow Anwar Kongo, a former gangster who worked as part of a death squad in, in the mid 60s, who now retells his experiences. On top of that, the director of this documentary asked Kongo and some of his friends and, and partners in crime, I guess, to reenact scenes of their killings in Hollywood style movie scenes. Now, that's a golden documentary premise, if I ever heard one. It's frightening to see how proud these guys are. I mean, they're, they're technically serial murderers. 
Definitely if you take into consideration that they basically decided whether or not the victim was a communist. It was basically, if you don't agree with the new government, you're a communist and you're going to die. This one guy, he takes it to quite an extreme. It's equally frightening to see how eager they are to reenact these scenes for the movie within a movie and how much they actually get into doing so. The documentary also reveals a lot of the political state of Indonesia, which is quite interesting, but it does force the viewer to do a lot of research and reading into of their own. And, and that's really my biggest problem with this movie. The focus could have been a lot better. Nowhere do they really explain what happened in the mid-60s and why or what the consequences were. This would have given the, the content in this movie a lot more context. Also, besides the, 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 main, the main plot, if you will, you know, about the ex-gangsters retelling and reacting their deeds as part of the Death Squad, we see a lot of different, sometimes very loosely connected subplots, which in the end, well, some of them do not really add a lot to the overall story. Then again, on a positive note, if you know that this is sort of a lost part of history, it's, it's really interesting to see how some people, including Congo, slowly start to realize that, well, maybe all that killing was indeed wrong. Because in and even outside of Indonesia, these killings are generally depicted as an act of heroism against communism. The amount of anonymous credits during the end credits prove that a lot of Indonesians were scared of the consequences of going against this popular opinion. So, while not a, a perfect documentary, it is definitely a, it's, it's a fascinating watch. Disturbing, I guess, b because of the, the willingness of the people involved to, to talk about the, the, these war crimes, I guess to call them, they've committed. It's, it's, a, it's a really, really interesting yet flawed documentary that I, that I do highly recommend to check out. I watched and then reviewed the US theatrical cut. It, well, the, the, the director's cut was an extra 45 minutes on top of the already two hour long theatrical cut. And from what I've read, from what I've understand, it, it doesn't make the movie better per se. So yeah, that's all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this special documentary edition. If, if I left out your favorite disturbing documentary, let me know in the comments. I mean, maybe in the future I'll do, a, I'll do another documentary part. Also in the in the comments, just just let me know what you thought of this video, and um, yeah, I, I hope to see you guys soon, or you know at least that you guys see me. Bye.